So today I'm going to be helping out a Redditor on the negotiation Reddit who is in their first job negotiation. And I'll be also looking at some of the advice others gave them. And in the end, I'm going to offer four pieces of advice for a job negotiation that I hope will be useful to the Redditor and to you. Let's go. Today we're plunging into the negotiation Reddit with a great question from Bill's Mafia 4 for Life. I'm in my first negotiation ever for a job and I need advice. Any help is a blessing and appreciated. I come from a unionized job in healthcare and where we never are able to negotiate and everything was based on years of service. I'm in my mid twenties and I have worked in the company for three years and have the opportunity to take a non-union role in the hospital. If I'm honest, not getting this role will not break me if that helps give advice. Today, the hospital offers me $88,000 to start. I know the top end makes about $110,000 with experience, but they are in a position where they need to fill the roles. I tell them a subordinate position, where I'm currently working, makes $91,000 on the top of the scale, with about 13 to 14 years of service. So I would like $98,000. They got back to me in 15 minutes and offer $90,000 to start, but 92,000 after three months. My personal absolute basement number is 95,000. I told them I'd give it the weekend to think. What are my next plays here? It's the first negotiation I've ever been in. I need help. Okay, Bill's Mafia for Life, there's a lot here. First of all, Bill's Mafia for Life, kudos to you for negotiating. You know, research has shown that fewer than 50% of the people who get a job offer actually negotiate their salary. And negotiating the salary is always a good idea. So, well done. Now, what to do? There's a bunch of things going on here. So first, you said your basement is $95,000. Fair enough, but my question for you is where did you get that number from? Why is it 95 and not 97 or 93? In negotiation, it is really important to come up with something that we call a reservation value. So a reservation value is the dollar amount at which you are indifferent between reaching a deal, so in this case accepting, or walking away. And we always have to come up with that number, but it should be based on something. And it feels a little bit random here. Secondly, right, you've countered here, but I'm not sure what the counter is based on. So in negotiation, you're gonna have a lot more power here if you've done some homework and some research, any number you throw out should be based on criteria. Now you put a little bit of criteria into your note, but I think there's a whole lot that is missing here. I'd be doing some research on what do comparable jobs in other hospitals pay? What do comparable people in this role get paid? And then I would actually come back with a counter that is based on that and I would give them the reason for it. Now it's interesting, you got all sorts of advice from people here. I, I, I love your friends on Reddit. So, so a few things, right? First, someone just says here, take the job, but get the three months raise in writing as part of an offer letter. My feeling, right, is you always wanna negotiate. Don't just say yes. But I think there is some wisdom here that if you're negotiating terms that are meaningful and material, getting it in writing is important. And if the other side says something to you, like, you could totally trust me, I always say, you know, it's not about trust, it's the worry that in three months you'll be promoted and this won't be memorialized anywhere. So I think that's really important. You know, years ago when uh, I was in a job negotiation at Harvard Law School, uh, I actually asked my dean at the time, saying it'd be really great to get this in writing, and she said, I'm gonna be in this job for a very long time. And I thought to myself, Maybe, but I doubt it. And we put it in writing, and I'm glad we did, because you know what? That boss is currently on the Supreme Court of the United States. It's Justice Elena Kagan. So sometimes people do get promoted, and having things in writing is a really good idea. Okay, so let's look at some of the other advice here. You know, there's a piece of advice here that I think is, is really helpful, um, and it's this person here who's saying, um, 
um, how can we get creative with compensation? Find something valuable to you that's less important to them, and then if they can't reach your number, ask about making up the difference with something like a signing bonus or perhaps a pre-scheduled performance bonus that's built into your contract, or stock options, or extra vacation, or a company car, or mileage reimbursements for your commute, or internet or cell phone reimbursement. I mean, this person here, right, they are being really wise because part of a negotiation in a job is around the salary, but there's all these other benefits that are also negotiable, and looking for Low-cost trades from them that are high value to you can make a lot of sense. And so I love this advice here. It's really, really good advice. Here's another piece of advice that I think is interesting. This person says, I can't, I can't believe you're gonna risk the entire negotiation over $3,000. I know many hiring managers who would see you as a PETA, I guess I have to say what that is, pain in the ass, and lose interest in you. Okay, so, to be fair, I'm not sure that this person said they're risking the entire negotiation over 3,000. I think what they are trying to do is actually set a bottom line number for themselves. As I said earlier, I'm not sure where that bottom line number came from and it should be carefully thought through. But I do think there's a really good piece of advice here, which is when you negotiate around salary, you need to do this really carefully. Because I think an, a positive attribute of an employee is someone who has enough, who has enough self-agency and enough self-respect and enough capacity to negotiate. That actually makes you an attractive employee. There is a fine line, though, between doing that and being a jerk and being insistent. And if you do that, suddenly what actually ends up happening is you do become less attractive to the potential employer and even if you get the money you want, that's not how you want to start your job. Okay, a lot of people rooting for you here. Um, I think this is really great. Um, let me just notice one more thing that I see coming up over and over here, and I think it's also really important in a negotiation. And that is that you absolutely want to look for objective criteria, but you also want to look for the ways in which you add unique value in a position. And even in this original note here, I see a few things. One, you've been working in this place for three years. That means you are a known entity, you are not a risk, you know the organization, and you could hit the ground running. And that is really powerful. The second thing here that's unique is that it sounds as if right now there's a dearth of people who are capable for this job. And so you can prove yourself right away, step right into the role. Any different ways that you could show your unique value are ways that you could push that salary level up. So to recap, first, whenever you get a job offer, consider negotiating the salary. Many, many people forget to do that to their own detriment. Secondly, you need to establish for yourself a reservation value, right? A bottom line for the negotiation. But when you do that, make sure it is based on something and that it's not a random number. Because if it's a random number, then it's really not a bottom line. Third, before you go back to the other side and ask for some more money, make sure you've done your homework. Link your request based on actual objective standards, legitimate criteria, not just a random ask. Fourth, always think about what are other issues that can be negotiated? What are the low cost things that the employer could do for you that would be high value and vice versa? That's a real source of value creation. And lastly, think about the unique value you bring to this particular job and make that case. As you do this, make sure you do it in a way that doesn't annoy your employer or make them less likely to want to hire you. If you found this video useful, and I hope you did, please subscribe to this channel, like the video, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. And be sure to watch this next video on how to mediate between two employees. Click, 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 keep watching.